Welcome to the Jesus People segment of the Antioch Indie Podcast, a place where each week we're going to hear from different people about what it means to walk with God. We hope that you leave encouraged and equipped and that this builds your faith for what God wants to do in your life. Welcome back, everybody, to Jesus People segment of our Antioch Indie Podcast. I have very special guests today, and I actually I feel so honored having you guys because I feel like I see you at church and I just feel, I'm like, wow, they're like a, a well and I need to know what's in the well, because I feel like mm-hmm. just having you guys come, and um, you guys said you've only been here since September. So guys, I, everyone, I have um, Christine and Mark Hines. Christine is on staff here, and then I just feel like since you guys even came in, you started showing up at a lot of stuff, like the marriage group you showed up at, and just seeing your, um, on Sunday mornings, looking out and seeing y'all engaged in worship has just been a gift. Um, it's just a gift to have people like that. I feel like anchors who come in, and you're like, oh, so glad they're here. I don't even know them, but I'm just so glad they're here. So that's how I feel with you guys. Um, but we were talking a little bit, and why don't you tell us where you're from, your kids, your family, that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, we were both raised in California. Um, Mark was born in Long Island, New York. I was born in Seattle, Washington, but yeah. we were raised mostly in California. And uh, we've been married 32 years, mm-hmm. and we have three kids, um, Charity, who is 26 yes. and Ben who is in the Navy he's off on a boat in out by Japan somewhere wow <laughs> he's married to Chrissy and Chrissy was the one that told us about Antioch Church mm-hmm. actually she came oh here back when you guys were down, down downtown yes mm-hmm. so um and then uh we have Stephanie who's 21 she also comes here mm-hmm. and she's we have in my great, d group she's yeah. awesome <laughs> and we have a granddaughter Jocelyn who is a little over a year and a half now that's so yeah. awesome. Yeah. So 32 years of marriage. Mm-hmm. You guys went to the marriage class. What mm-hmm. are your thoughts coming out <laughs> of it? It's good. Yeah. Um, sometimes you realize that you ha- you, you're not always walking hand in hand. Yeah. And so life happens and how you're using your time, your energy, your resources, you have to yeah. have that um, coming into agreement so that you can walk hand in hand going mm-hmm. forward. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it was good. I, yeah. I would I would recommend uh, that Everybody however many know. years you've been, go yeah. ahead and get a tune up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's what it feels like. I, yeah. Chad and I have done it for, I think this was our third year. Um, that Steve and Linda put on this marriage class for those of you who maybe don't know. Um, every it's like usually in October, and um, every year the first year we fought after every class, and then the second year it was kind of like half and half. And this year we didn't fight after any, so it was like That's we were good. nailing it. And so we marriage. went to Ch- Cheesecake Factory a- afterwards, and and we misunderstood the assignment. And so as we got into our discussion, we began to look at one another's weaknesses because that's what yeah. we thought the assignment was, and. All of a sudden, the cheesecake was, you know, not the tasting yeah, so great. Like, well, this is great. Yeah. I'm sure be it'll be better this. next <laughs> right. next year. So, well, and no, I'm but sure, it was fine. We, no, like, uh, you know, ten years into marriage, I'm like, I know Chad could call my weaknesses, and I'm sure 32 years in, it's you know each other pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah we, we do, and we still like each other. That's yeah. so great. And we want to do life together. That's so. And sometimes awesome. that's what you have to remind yourself. We may be. <laughs> in a little argument right now, but I know this, I want to do life with you and I love doing life with you. So the best is yet to come. That's so (laughs) great. Okay. So when did you guys start walking with the Lord? Like when in your, I I received the Lord when I was in high school, about 16 years old, I think in 1982. So, um, yeah, some, some time ago I come from a family that um, wasn't church going and didn't know the Lord. So my twin sister, she received the Lord about six months earlier, told me of the, of no the Lord. Way. And, um, I went into my bedroom and, and knelt down near my bed and, and received the Lord right there. So that all by awesome. myself, I didn't have any church background or anything. Yeah. So. Well, I had church background. I was, I was raised in a denominational church and, uh, got saved when I was, I think 18, 18 or no, 19. I think I was 19 when I got saved. Okay. And it was right after we had a couple dates, actually. No way. <laughs> and yeah, and I saw he had this relationship with God that I just knew nothing about. Yeah. And um, and so, yeah, and I was by myself in my bedroom also. Then I, I cried out to the Lord and said, I want to know you, Lord, like Mark does. And like <laughs> Mark does. <laughs> yeah. That's so and awesome. the Lord's presence just filled my room, and I was just a new creation after that. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah. And so how long did it take for you all to get married after that? Uh, I suppose it was what a year and a half something yeah. like that six months later we uh-huh. were engaged went yeah. up to bible school three months after we were engaged yeah. oh that wasn't then. popular uh, with the family no. they, going to they, bible yeah, school whisking <laughs> my her daughter their away. daughter away yeah, yeah. at so like the, what you were 20 at that yeah. time that was 19 yeah. we got married at to 20 heading yeah. to oklahoma that was not a popular thing so what bible school did you guys go to yeah. 
Would so you? yeah, go ahead. Rama. Uh-huh. Okay. Rama Bible yeah. Training Center. Mm-hmm. That's uh-huh. great. Kind of a word of faith circles. Yeah. At that yeah, time. no, I've heard mm-hmm. of it. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we were both young in the Lord. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of the, you know, there was a lot that came forth during that time, but you can only you only have a capacity for so much. I know. And so I'm sure a lot of it was runoff, you yeah. know, but um, a lot of good things came into our heart at that time. And I think that really became a good foundation for our, our marriage. Yeah, that is uh, so cool. Uh, because what was encouraged was fellowship with the Lord and mm-hmm. a love walk. Mm-hmm. And so um, as you're heading toward that end and that goal mm-hmm. together, it, it was just really easy for our lives to mesh. So really, really, we've had 32 years of a little bit of heaven on earth. Um, That's so not cool. that everything's been perfect, right. but it's it's been really it's been wonderful times. So. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you feel like you, I think I, what I love is mm-hmm. that you guys went together mm-hmm. um, rather than one of you experienced it and then y'all met. Cause that's hard. It's hard to yeah. try to like explain to someone, Hey, my life, I, I got changed here or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. so great. I was thinking this morning um, in college there, we had put on our shirts for a mission trip at Antioch and it was Isaiah 61 um, that you'll be oaks of the Lord planted, mm-hmm. you know, for the display of his splendor. And it was all about like the Isaiah 61 beauty for ashes. And I was reading it again this morning and remembered that shirt. And I was literally thinking like, I don't even remember hearing that verse in the way that I look at it now. Mm -hmm. You know, it is like that runoff. Like you hear so much and at a certain age, you know, the Lord matures the word like a good wine, right? Like it like ripens with age. And you're like, oh, now I'm like really tasting Isaiah 61. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 32 years of marriage. You did ministry together for how long or were part of this ministry before? Um, when we came out of Bible school, we were recruited to help in a, uh, this small ministry up here in, in Indiana, a work that was started back in 74 wow. uh, in the charismatic renewal. People were coming out of denominational settings, yeah. uh, hungering for the move of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, uh, yeah. receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And so that particular work started up in 74 and by 84 they started a summer youth camp and they would recruit counselors teachers wranglers helps from around the nation um, different bible schools to come help at that summer youth camp so that's how we ended up there in 1987 yeah. and then 1988 we became a we moved back up from tulsa area to become a part of of that ministry eventually became youth leaders um, camp directors the ministry transitioned in 94 to, to 95 range or so um, and then we came back and we were part of that ministry in 97 and um, so I, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. No but, it's great you guys were part of it for yeah, a long time. Yeah. So Christine at that point began to you know continue to be in the the camp mm-hmm. setting and um, I worked uh, a, a job to of course take care of the family and yeah. And uh, that's, you know, so she, she labored in camp setting where I just plugged in as a youth leader in the church and then also helped on Sunday messages and things along those lines. So. Cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So 30 yeah. years of that. And I feel like, mm-hmm. you know, hearing you guys talk even about beforehand, we were talking about the acceleration almost of life. Like you, you have jobs, then you have kids. Yeah. You also have ministry. The right. full throttle years. Right. And yes. you, yeah. it feels like yeah. you just keep adding to the plate. Um, and I feel like there are a lot of young families at Antioch right now and myself included with with Chad where we're trying to figure out the adding to the plate and do I have room on my plate you know like right. it's mm-hmm. like how do you make those decisions and what do you feel like wh- wh- what wisdom would you guys give us I guess I think I, I think it's easy to get swept along yeah and um, to say yes to everything because you can but you're only one person right and um even the lord when after ministering healing and i think it was peter's mother-in-law that was sick and then there was those that were demonic or are yep. oppressed by demons that the demons were cast out of and the next morning he rises early and he's spending time with his heavenly father and the disciples come and find him and say oh master all men seek you yeah and he basically said i must needs so he he knew he had yeah. a compass. He yeah, knew definitely. what he ne- needed to do, that he needed to preach the gospel in other parts. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of pulls there. and uh, But it's easy to get wrapped up in it because the need's there. Oh, I can do that. I can help. Yeah. You know? um, so I, I, I suppose just 
tuning into our Heavenly Father. Yeah. And knowing what it is that He wants us to do, what He wants us to say, what He wants to be a part of, and understanding those seasons, that there's seasons in life too, and there's constant changes. So Yeah, definitely. Um, so what were some of the um for you like mm-hmm. when you when you feel like you got busy and it was kind of the mindless busyness or the too many yeses in ministry, maybe for you, Christine, like were there red flags in your heart almost mm-hmm. that you would say, like, hey, I, I'm doing this, but like soul health, how, how yes. are you aware of soul health, I guess, in the middle of all that? Uh, I remember, well, we were so busy, yeah. And then I had a, I had a friend of ours or um, that used to be in our youth group is now a young woman. And, and I remember her being in a desperate situation and really needing a friend, needing somebody to pray with her and talk to her. I had not one ounce of time yeah. I could give her yeah. at all. And I thought, there was something wrong with this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was yes. so busy. And, and then my, I think another moment was I was, it was at Christmas time, and we were getting ready to head out to California to be with our family. And so we were just, you know, finishing up everything. We also have two home businesses. And, um, and I remember running into Walmart to do something. Anyway, ran into the men's restroom to go to the bathroom. Oh, no. <laughs> Did you know it? I and know I come out of the story. stall, and I was like, oh, my gosh. What am I doing? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and just, I think I was talking on the phone. I was yeah. multitasking, and just, yeah, and that was when I, I, I walked out of the, out of Walmart, sat in my car, and said, okay, there's something wrong here. Yeah. No, I get it. I, I was talking to a D group last night. We were talking about the fast that we're right now in the middle of the fast that we did at the beginning, or the end of February, and um, some of the girls had given up social media, and they were saying how... It, that it opened up so much time for them. And mm-hmm. then I was thinking, like, we already have so much time, like, that, we that we're giving to other things. How do we even have time to keep up with everyone's social lives mm-hmm. on top of everything else? Right. Oh, well, she just to think about. Right. Um, okay, so for you, yeah, just feeling like you're crazy, yeah. running I crazy. got to the place mm-hmm. where um, after there was a gentleman that came to me and said, you know, Mark, he, he understood where we had our fingers yeah. Uh, every area that we had our fingers involved and, in, you yeah. know, and um, he said, Mark, you know, a word comes to me for you and it's the word balance. And I had gotten away from just yeah. spending time with the Lord. Yeah. And he was encouraging me to get back to abiding in the vine. Yeah. And I was kind of on that hamster wheel of ministry and life. And then things got tougher yeah. after that. I wasn't able to carve out that time. I was compartmentalizing my life. And, um, uh, I wasn't, and you know, after my work season, then I'll spend time with the Lord and, and that's not healthy. God wants you to connect with him every single day. Yeah. So things got tougher those following two years. And I was pushing 80 hour work weeks and trying to, you know, uh, preach at two, the two churches and, yeah. and be and, a dad and, and be a dad in very important years. You know, mm-hmm. it was, it was years when our kids were, you know, just at the tail end of high school and, yeah. and going away and so we just were on that hamster wheel you mm-hmm. know and um I, the thing is is the the lord he he cares about us mm-hmm. uh, more f- for not just for what we can do for him right but for who we are to him right he cares for us first and foremost as his children um, not just as his servants yeah and so there was that beckoning to i believe that beckoning and he saw the need for us to come back to him and to sit at his feet and to you know, do the Mary, Mary Martha thing. Right. To choose the to good actually part. actually be Mary and sit. That yeah. is hard for me. I don't know about. Yeah. Uh, we actually, I had Heather and Andrew on last week in the podcast, and we were talking about Sabbath. Almost, uh, we didn't plan this, guys, so this is totally oh, the wow. Holy Spirit. But <laughs> we were talking about um, what do you do when you can't do anything for God? Like that Sabbath is the idea of being before the Lord and him saying, I'm the one who sanctifies you. Like I'm the one who sets mm. you apart, not mm. the things you do. And as a high capacity person, it's hard to feel like, like I like to have many, many things, you know, and to keep a lot of plates spinning, but to, to be like, oh, I can't, I'm actually not giving you anything in all of that busyness. You know what I mean? It is like all for him, Yeah. but it's just hard. Yeah. So this, per, this last year in, in 2018, as I was getting ready to start my work season up, um, I, some of those same that same anxiety was coming, that need for change. I felt the Lord was speaking to my heart, change and the necessity for it. Yeah. And Christine's involvement in camp, um, you know, was at least 20 hours a week and then full time through the summer months. Yeah. And so um, 
because I felt some of that anxiety rising up in my heart and some of those tensions and just things being out of sorts. I just went to the Lord in prayer and just felt a, a redirect yeah. and felt okay with it. Yeah. Um, and that it was the choosing of that good part mm-hmm. and uh, to sit at his feet again. And, you know, sometimes you feel condemnation when you back off from something good. Right. And you feel guilty. Right. And you hear this, that you have this chatter of voices saying, you can't do that, right. you know, because you'll be leaving this hole or you'll be, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and there's a there's a condemnation that comes with it. But, you know, as I drew back with the Lord, um, I could tell he was he was there again, concerned more about us as his children than what we could do. He wanted to nurture us back to health, mm-hmm. get things back in priority yeah. uh, him first. Yeah. And um, and I, I think I was sharing earlier that. There was a time on the plane to California uh, in in June, this last June, where I was listening to a Dirt and Grace album by Hillsong, and the Lord was ministering to me, washing over with me with his presence there on the airplane in the window seat as I'm bawling my <laughs> eyes out trying to be inconspicuous, but, you know, the snot and tears were flowing. And, yeah. And uh, I just felt like the Lord was saying there was going to be an uprooting and a planting, and I felt like the Lord was saying that he was, there was, there would be a nurturing place. Um, wow. and so what we've experienced since we've come to Antioch, um, as we transitioned out of the things we are involved in is just the nurturing of the Lord. The Lord, he cares for, he yeah. cares for us individually. Yeah. He wants to tend to us. Mm-hmm. And, um, through the messages on Sunday, not just Andrew, but through many mass- messages and even the archive mm-hmm. messages, um, the Lord's just, we're hearing his voice yeah. and he, we're, he's tending to us. So That's restoring so cool. us back to health. And then we have people reaching out, um, different men of the body just reaching out and having conversation and helping one another follow Jesus. And, yeah. and so it's, it's been really good. That's um, so awesome. It's been rejuvenating. I'm so glad. For sure. I feel like when uh, Cade was diagnosed, I was leading the worship team and I had this moment where I just realized like I couldn't do that anymore. And there was that fear of like, what's going to happen. But it's amazing how the Lord fills the gaps, you know? So, yeah. and he, like you're saying, he's concerned about soul health, our emotional health as well. And yes. Um, yeah, he's like the I, one that started this. I, right, I like think he can, he can carry handle it, on. it. <laughs> right, and you know, he, he knows. He is every the savior person. of the world after, <laughs> all, after all. He does not get overwhelmed. Like yeah. I get overwhelmed, <laughs> and like he, it's just amazing when you, as I've stepped out of various things in season, seeing when God brings someone and it's like the perfect fit. Yeah. Just being like Emily doing worship team, it's like, oh, that makes so much sense. And and then how how free my heart has been, or you know, just just not feeling compelled just because there's a need. I think when you were talking about Jesus and all the people coming to him for ministry, Mm -hmm. Jesus saw need, but he was only compelled by what the Father was doing, Mm -hmm. which is so different and requires such an intimacy with the Father. It does, and a silencing of all those other voices. Yeah. And a a knowing of what he is saying to us. Yeah. So, How has it been for you, Christine, like coming in and, and you're on staff now? Can you tell us a little bit about that transition and process? Well, I was needing to find a job and thought about January would probably be a good time for that. And uh, and when I saw the uh, annou- the advertisement on the social media for actually, the... Actually, didn't the girls see the advertisement first? Yeah, they, yeah, they sent me. Your daughter said, yeah, so yeah for the church ministry, they sent me these texts. And when I saw it, I my heart just leaped yeah and I was really did not see that on my radar coming up at all and because and we're we were busy right that's <laughs> we're not thinking get back involved right in, you in don't want to be busy again yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's a little bit of uh you know safeguard there you're, yeah. you know and, and uh, uh, but boy, I just had a joy in my heart and so I applied and yeah. they hired me <laughs> and uh, I was and down in the lo- uh the basement doing some laundry and you know she told me about the position and I I just said, oh, really? Hmm. So I went to the basement. I was doing laundry, and and I just started thinking about it, and that joy started bubbling up in my yeah. spirit, and I thought, well, that's the witness of the spirit. And yes. So I just engaged her in conversation when I got upstairs and said, so what are you thinking about that? What, how's that how do, what do you think about that administrative position? So. 
Oh yeah, and I just I just have joy, and I keep smiling when I think oh. about it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I would not have joy or smiling no, over an it, administrative. When position. it comes to administration, I'd rather go to the dentist. Right, you me know? too. So this is not <laughs> like you my... do not want to hire me. That's <laughs> awesome, though. Okay, so you have this joy. Yes, yes, and yeah. So they hired me, and I'm j- learning a lot, learning how to, you know, just administrate everything, and hopefully, I'm being a blessing. I'm yeah. I'm loving it. I love being here and the other staff and. It's so great. It's the thing great. about Christina, she's she has a very happy personality. Yeah, and, I can tell. Um, mm-hmm. So um, she's very easy to get along with. I, I suppose that's probably why the yeah. Lord knit us together. Yeah, so, yeah. Cause, <laughs> whatever. Cause she, I have a husband <laughs> yeah. who's like that too, though. Everybody <laughs> likes Chad first. Um, that's so awesome, and I love that that you're just saying like there was joy in stepping into a level of busyness again. Because mm-hmm. I think sometimes, like in my head, I'm like, oh, if I want to get rest, I just have to pull back from everything. I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's, I mean, you, yeah, you think you, you, you have that reservation if yeah. I get involved. But now Andrew's challenging us, don't hold back. So Yeah, right? I know. <laughs> that's a hard word for the year when you want to rest. But there is, I mean, there's that place, though, and I think returning to what you talked about, the Mary of Bethany sitting before the Lord. Like, how, how do you feel like since, not that Antioch has been the pill that made you do this, but how has that transition helped you actually do that in your hearts? Can you go into that a little bit? Well, I think there's some positive pillars at Antioch um, where what's emphasized is it, it's not all about ch- church on Sundays. Mm-hmm. That's a part of, of hearing from the Lord. Mm-hmm. But um, what's emphasized is, is a real relationship with the Lord yeah. and being in communion with him. So from spending time with the Lord for, by yourself to um, discipleship, which is kind of a big word, it simplified. Yeah. Andrew said, hey, just have a conversation with somebody. Just yeah. just, just help them follow Jesus, you yeah. know. And um, to, to where, to having small groups together where you get together, it's in each of these settings, you're hearing the voice of the Lord. Mm-hmm. God's always speaking. Each one of us are being led of the Holy Spirit, but sometimes yeah. we're not tuned in. Right, we're just not. Uh, just, yeah, there's just this clamor yeah, uh, that's definitely. going on of life sometimes. But he's speaking, and he speaks through the messages. He speaks through in those discipleship settings he speaks in the small group settings um and you know when it comes to then in turn having a missions mindset you're in a place where you begin to care again and and begin to have a heart and things are coming up in your heart and so some people are going uh they're going to other nations and other people are staying and Mm -hmm. they're becoming more aware of their sphere of influence how Mm -hmm. they might influence on their job or in their home um, but the go ye gets back in you, yeah, because, definitely. Because you're being rejuvenated, yes. and and you're fresh. You're walking with a fresh relationship with the Lord. So, yeah, that's what I'm finding. At least, I, where what was a concern for me is that my heart stopped caring yes. during those. Two I was going to bring that up that you said that. Yeah. I thought that's so interesting. Yeah. I've heard someone else that I know who is on staff talking about that. How he had loved people. Um, But then like the busyness of life, just like the busyness of ministry, just the things that he had enjoyed in ministry became completely joyless. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a flag. It's like, yes, there's a part of working and sometimes you just put your head down at work. But but when you're dead inside. Right. You know, and that's a that's a scripture. The church at Sardis, you have a name that you're alive, yet you're dead. Yes. And he encourages in the book of Revelation is Mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Yes. He encourages them to return. um, Well, not to their first love there, but he he encourages them to um, remember how they how they've heard. Yeah. And how they've received. Yeah. And to get back to and hold fast to those things. Yeah. And it's not just the content of what you've heard, but I think it's the heart in which you've heard. Mm-hmm. You know, do you remember the days when you used to value the word of God yeah. or people, you used to care about that person that came across your path? Do you yeah. remember the heart that you felt when you met the Lord and the, the joy you had when you received the pearl of great price and mm-hmm. how you wanted to, to make him known? And so... You know, remember how you heard in King James, it says that, but I think it says what you heard in other translations, but remember how you heard Mm -hmm. and received Mm -hmm. and um, hold fast to that. And so for me, it's been a time of getting back to remembering, well, encountering the Lord and getting that value system back in place, uh, of valuing the things he values. When you spend time with him, he impresses his heart upon you. And once again, you begin to care. Yeah. And that neighbor that you didn't really, that was bothersome yeah. to you. 
you actually begin you to have compassion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a what a novel idea. Right. To, to meet with the Lord, our yeah. Savior, and then to actually be, you know, uh, to care what He cares yeah. about. Yeah, it is it's so just, cool. Yeah. So, anyway, it's, it's, it really is a lot less complicated. It's yeah. just getting back to first things first. It's awesome. You know, getting that ba- balance and realignment back in place. So, so good, yeah. Christine. What about for you? How do you feel like, like stepping back into that place of just loving on the Lord, or maybe you don't even feel like that was gone ever, but. I don't. I don't think I was. It was quite as gone. It, my well was def- definitely dry, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's been wonderful to just have that focused time, um, having a little bit more time in my schedule just to to seek the Lord mm-hmm. and just the word that's coming forth in service has just been so wonderful and just yeah. just seems like almost every Sunday I'm like this is just for me. That's so good. <laughs> you know, it's been so good. That's so awesome. Yeah, I love it. And I love that you're on staff doing administrative stuff. I told you I wanted to talk about this because Chad and I, um, Chad is my husband. He's more administrative, obviously. And um, we were talking to a sister-in-law of ours, and she was sharing how the gifts of administration and, like, the gifts of the Spirit, I think it's, like, 1 Corinthians 13 or 14, in the listing, it actually comes after the gift of healing. Mm. And she was just trying to, like, she was like, this is a very important gift. Mm. And so I love, like, for you that it's such an important gift. Do you feel like, have you ever had, like, um, you know, just, like, insecurity of, like, oh, it's just administrative gifting instead of, like, preaching or something that seems more flashy? Do you know what I mean? I see what you mean. I, I don't know if I, I think that. I There's a joy in me that comes from being able to, like, with Sandra or Am or Sam, Andrew or Sam, yeah. <laughs> if there's something I can take off their plate, you want that do they can do more in their gifting. Yeah, that that brings such joy to me. That's so you awesome. <laughs> so you are a helper. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I love it. And it just, yeah, I guess that's just the way God wired me. That's so great. <laughs> do you feel like your kids can um, sense what the Lord's been doing in you in the past couple months? Oh, definitely. Yeah. A Co- <laughs> yeah. couple years ago, Stephanie, when she got back from California, strangely enough, so we left, I left Vacaville to go to Bible school 30 years ago. Yeah. She went to Vacaville to intern. To go to that church. She told yeah. me about that. And uh, she, anyway, being in a in that setting, she then comes back and um, being away from us for about a year, she comes back. She says, Dad, you're so under it. His, his yoke is easy. His burden is light. Oh, my gosh. Know? She would say yeah. something like that, too. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, she, there's never a dull moment with Stephanie. Right. So, uh, but. Man, that's a good yeah, word. How yeah. was that as a dad, hearing something like that from your daughter? Well, it, you know, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, yeah. sometimes the Lord speaks and perfects praise. Right. And so, you know, he speaks through different ones. And, and it wasn't just her. I could see it in my own life, you know, that. Mm-hmm. I need a, re- a, a reset, so and realignment. So and so, they seeing you now. What what mm-hmm. is what would she say? She wouldn't say his yoke is easy. Would she be like? I, I think I, I think her. my my other daughter Charity. Um, she, I think I was having a conversation with her last night, and she she said, "Oh yeah, Dad, you're you're, you're a different person already." Wow. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, there was. Yeah, he started making jokes and stuff again, and I was like, yeah. oh, I forgot. What is that, that on your face? <laughs> I thought you were funny. <laughs> what is that on your face? Oh, that's a smile. Mm. Man, you know. that's yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah, and just and just sharing the word too. If we're in a group of people, it just, all of a sudden more was coming out of his heart. And yeah, it was just, mm-hmm. he knew he was coming was alive great. again. Yeah. yeah, that is so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I had one lady that um, sh- she's a prophet, and she she as she go, went to pray for me, she just felt like there was a stopped up well, you know, and Whoa. That's, that's what, you know, and you're you like, know. Oh, thanks for that. Really yeah. encouraging. Yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> really she, encouraging. Says, she says, are you depressed? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but anyway, she's, no, she's got a dear heart. She was just relating yes. to me before she was ministering the spirit to me. And, uh, but you know, she was causing, calling for that well to, to spring up again. So, wow. Mm-hmm. I, what I love yeah. to hearing even your story is that God, spoke to other people and then s- they spoke to you mm-hmm. and you didn't get offended and you didn't get bitter and I, maybe you were even for a second i don't i'm putting words in your mouth i'm assuming you didn't get offended and just like no no yeah. I, I mean sometimes you want to when you're get in the that condition you want to run right from relationship but that's really the time to snuggle up um <laughs> like a like a log that is just um smoldering mm-hmm. Um, you have a name that you're alive, yet you're dead. Yeah. He says, strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. Yeah. So it's not that the, the fire is completely out. It's smoldering. Mm-hmm. Those are the times to 
they're again cozy up against the other logs that yeah. are ablaze and allow the Lord to breathe on you. And yeah. it's not comfortable to be in relationships sometimes with people, and especially when you're out of sorts. Right. Um, but it's the best thing for you to get yeah. close to the body of Christ because the grace flows from the head, our Lord Jesus Christ, through his members, one to another. And he wants to make those divine connections in our lives so that he can minister his grace to us. Yeah. And so, yeah, awesome. he then blows on us. And then somehow um, he causes you to come alive and and then he ministers his grace through you, too, to others. It's uh, so when, good. So when they need to come alive as well. So yeah. It's good. I mean, God's just he's faithful. He's he a is. faithful shepherd he is. that tends to us on every turn. Yeah. And so and he loves his church. We on this podcast, the pa- past two, we've talked about Hebrews ten twenty five, not forsaking the assembling of together. And that's the reason. It's not to add to this list. You right. know, I'm already so busy I can't do this, this, this and this. You know, it's not to be a burden. It's yeah. not it, it's 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 for you. You weren't made for it. It was made for you. Yeah. Uh, it's to be beneficial. That it, I mean, it's so good. And Whether it it's is. our quiet time or just getting together one-on-one yeah. or making it to those small groups, yeah. making it to church, it, these things are for you. Yeah. Um, and what I love, too, is I feel like sometimes when you do a lot of ministry and then you kind of get jaded on not even the practice of it, but just like your own busyness. I love that you didn't have this attitude of like coming here and being like, oh, a bunch of young, young people. You don't know. You don't know what it's like 20 years down the road. But instead yeah. you're like, OK, I'm ready to. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. That's a lot of humility. Well, I think you come t- come to the end of yourself sometimes and yeah. you realize how weak you are and how without strength you are. Um, especially when you start to strive within yourself and labor within yourself to to accomplish. Right. And then. You're like, no, this is, this is, this, this is, it has to be, our sufficiency is from him. Mm-hmm. Um, it has, the grace has to flow from him. So, no, there, I mean, there's nothing impressive about us. Yeah. What we come to find is, you know, after 20 or 30 years of being in ministry, if there, after, you know, some successes, some failures, um, if there's anything impressive, it's the mercy of the Lord. It's mm-hmm. his goodness. It's his kindness. Yeah. And you realize that it's it's his strength mm-hmm. that affects any good thing in our life. Yeah. So, I love that. I, yeah. It reminds me of when uh, Jesus was talking to his disciples and he, he says, who do you say that I am? Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm sure at that point they're kind of getting a reputation, right, as his disciples. But instead of like, he's not even saying to them, like, Peter, you're this and this and this. He's saying, like, who do you say I am? And like, that's really what the Lord, it, when our lives are boiled down, like, it's like, who, who are we saying that he is, you know? And yeah. I love that you're yeah. talking about returning to that. Yeah. I think when you go through transition, you can identify with those past successes or those past failures. There's, but the Lord doesn't want us to do that. He wants yeah. to identify with who he is yeah. and, um, who we are with him yeah. and in him. Um, so, and it's like healing, mm-hmm. you know, you don't have to reference your yeah. whatever didn't happen or did happen in the yeah. past. You I think when Moses to came to, um, when Moses was on the backside of the wilderness there and the angel of the Lord appears in the burning bush, yeah, you know, he's just, he's reduced to, you know, having s- stepped out in his own strength, sensing destiny in his own heart and fleeing uh, Pharaoh yeah. when he went, stepped out in his own strength. But when the Lord finds him, He's like, well, who am I? And yeah. God says, no, it's not about who you are. It's, it's who am who I? I am. Yeah, exactly. That's what he says. <laughs> and, uh, and he says, what is that in your hand? And um, so at this stage, you know, with Christine and I, you know, we just want to take what's in our hand and, you know, be a part of what's going on here and uh, so the body of Christ, you know. So well, we are fun. like super blessed to have mm-hmm. you guys. It's, it's so It's good great. to be here. Good. And we rejoice with how the Lord is using the, the body here yeah. and the, the love that's flowing and so great and the good things that are happening. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. Guys, thanks for yeah. being with us. I'm going to pray to close our time, but I just, I, this is like the heart of what I was looking for in this podcast was yeah. to find out the wells of wisdom in our church mm. and the gifts that are in our church. You know, you only hear from a few people on stage, but just to give give space to figure out who's who you know and like what god what god's doing so it's good to know each other yes and i love i i I think 
everything you said today was really rich and so i'm very thankful that you guys took well, it's this good time. to be here thank you for well, inviting us that's so great. <laughs> okay let me pray lord i just thank you for this um for your holy spirit working and tying things together um even the idea of us not working for our own um like approval before your eyes but that you already approve of us and so ministry is that joy that christine had and we just thank you for even the way that her story is giving um, space for other people who are hearing this to be like, oh, that joy is from the Lord. Like, I can say yes to this. And I pray that we would, as a body, learn how to be healthy and how to give space to each other um, to sit before the feet of the Lord when we need to um, and give grace in different seasons. And I just thank you for the Heinz and I bless them, God, and I bless every person who hears this podcast. In your name, amen. 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 Thanks, guys. It's so good to be with you. Thanks so much for listening with us today. If you would like any further information or resources, you can visit AntiochIndy.com or find us on Instagram at AntiochIndy.